So you've got your people comfortable with their float. You've got your people comfortable with a back float. Um, and you can do what I'm about to show you either right after the front or right after the back or after either one, however you want to. But what you want them to begin to understand is how their body floats in the water and how things are different with that. So we do that by doing a, a float, and I'll show you the face first float, but we do it by moving our hands. So we'll do uh, our hands straight up, like as if we were doing our original float out pull when we're doing our hops. And then we'll get them to just move their hands slowly out to a T, and then we'll get them to move their hands down to the bottom to their hips. And what they're gonna find is that some people, when they get their hands down here, their hips will drop just automatically. Nothing they can do about it, their legs start dropping and falling. Uh, some people that may happen to earlier, if they move their hands back up here to a T, or they move their hands up to a Y, their body may follow right along. And you just want them to see how changes in their body affect that teeter-totter balance, okay? That's all we're going for here. It's fairly simple, but you don't want it to be fast. You want it to be slow and comfortable because if they move fast, they're not gonna get this. It takes slow movements to get it. So on face, real quick and easy, um, I'll start to move. Now, what you can't see very well from on top is that as my hands come down to my waist, my feet drop completely to the bottom. Touch the bottom, sit there. As I pull my hands back up to the T, nothing really happens, but as I move my hands back up here, my feet begin to raise off the ground. That's my feet. That's not their feet. That's mine. It may not be yours. So. You want them to find that balance to see where it is. You do exactly the same thing on the back with the movement, with that change. And we've seen that already, how that affects me. We're just doing that. One of the things that does is show them how their movement changes. The other thing it does is get them used to moving in the water um, and the balance that goes with that. And some people get really scared with that and just say, you know, sometimes you think you're going to turn over. The water really doesn't let you do that easily. We're going to teach you how to do that, and it takes a little more energy than you think. Um, but, but play until you're comfortable and you see that what I'm telling you there is true. Begin to believe that and go. So that's the start of how we move, uh, get them beginning to do additional balance in the water and to continue affecting their balance with the movements of their hands or the rest of them. Okay, so they're floating. Uh, they've gotten a little used to moving around. We're getting them now to move towards swimming in any sense that they think of that word. And so what we do is get them to get in their float, put their hands out, tilt them this way, and they're gonna pull back and we're just gonna do a single pull, okay? Plain and simple. So we're going to come back here. I'm going to say, put your hands up, put them together, turn your palms out, pull down from your float. You're going to be set. Here we go. They will wonder, if I do that and I have my hands down to my side, how do I get back up? So let them know whenever you're ready to come back up, just put your hands out in front of you in any way you want to at the moment. Push down, do your standard recovery, and we're good to go. Same is true for the back. I'm gonna get them to lay on their back, but they're not gonna be able to get their hands here and get them turned. For most people, that's way too complicated. So I start with hands just to the side, and push down, and they just take half the push, and that's all they need to get them moving down the road. That's the first piece you'll have a bunch of people who want to push a whole bunch of times, who want to do a real quick pull and a real quick pull and a real quick pull. Ask them to slow down, 
ask them to be gentle, ask them to feel the float after they pull. Pull as hard as you want, but wait after that's over. Feel that coast, feel yourself moving through the water from that pool before you go get busy with your hands. There are lots of people who think they're only gonna be safe in their water if they're moving their hands, and you want them to see that that's not true. That's where we're going with that. So that first pull, good, front, back, whichever way. Then, once they've got the first pull, you've got them comfortable with the float and they're enjoying that. Then show them that once they've pulled down, you bring your hands up close to your body and then you slice through coming up. This is, for me, the way I say it for them is, when you're pulling down, that's your power. When you come back up, you're just staying as close to your body as you can so that you're not adding extra drag. And then you're doing the closest thing you can do to a karate chop with both hands, which is pushing forward like that, like this. For them, I don't care how they do it. It's just bringing their hands here so it's not pulling down and then coming back out. And I show them at this point in time that if they do both power places. So if they're here and then they bring their hands back up here, it's not useful for them again. We've shown it to them before with this thing, right? But now I show them with this move. And they say, wow, you stopped. It's like, exactly. That's what we don't want you to do. That's why we want you to pull down Bring it in close to your body and then push forward before you turn out to do your next pull. And once they've done one and they're comfortable, then let them start doing two and let them start doing three. And however many they are, watch. They're going to tend to go really, really fast with those and you want them to be calm. You want them to be comfortable in that process. So then once they're comfortable and they've pulled a couple of times and stood up, then if they're moving okay with it and if they like it, then some, then sometimes I just say, look, we've got from here to our five foot mark at 12 and a half yards. I want you to pull and pull until you want to come up or you need breath. Come up, get your breath, then go back in and pull and pull again until you need to stop again. Come up, get your breath, come pull again, and let's just see how many breaths it takes for you to get to the end and it's not a race at this point in time because they could say I'm gonna hold my breath the whole time and go through it's like good for you at the end say how did you feel Are you tired Are you winded what's going on and they say oh uh, you know I held my breath the whole way I'm exhausted I'm <gasps> okay it's like okay good so what I want you to do is come back this other way and I want you to do it every third time let's see and come up get your breath go come up Get your breath, go, and begin to see what kind of breath, what kind of air you need, how often you need to stop. It's a good place to talk about blowing bubbles, which we've talked about, or blowing water out as you move, to begin to get some of the, to begin to get some of that standard breathing process going. And this is a place I'll say with regularity, you know, if you're up on the land, you don't go, Walk, 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 walk. Nobody does that, right? It's not the way our lungs are made, so you've got to figure out some way to get that transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide in some kind of a reasonable, steady, kind of cyclical way so that you can be comfortable in the water and not always out of breath. And take time. It takes folks a while for that to make sense. It certainly takes a while for them to practice enough to see the difference between two pulls versus three pulls versus five pulls and to begin to say, okay, I'm getting that and I feel that and it makes sense to me. That's where we're going with the, the pulls and we're starting on thinking about breath as it relates to motion in the water, which helps us as we go down the road. Now that your folks have floating down, the next question is how do I move? How do I get around in the water? So we're going to use Denise to demonstrate that. So. Um, what we're going to do is ask her to get into her float, and once she's in her float, we're going to ask her to pull with her hands, 
using the power part of your hands, that's a big piece of this, just pull around here, and you actually want your hands to be under water, but I'm showing up here just so you can see. But you want your hands to stay about six inches under water as you do your pull. And so you'll do your pull, and the first time when you pull around, it's gonna be a pull, and when you get through, you're just gonna hit the sides of your thighs, and you're gonna be done, and just coast from there. Then slide your hands back out in front and do your recovery so that you know how to get back up. Does that sound all right? Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, madam. So that looks really nice. So let's talk about how to do, how do you keep going further than that? So we'll talk a little about hands for a second. So what's happening is, if, if you imagine me swimming here, I have my hands up and I'm pulling down to my waist. Now, if I come back this way, then I end up using power here and power here. So I end up going nowhere. And so we'll just show that. So what I want you to do is pull your hands, and pull gently so we stay on camera. Okay. But pull gently, and then just bring your hands back around the same way outside. So you're going to pull down, then you're going to pull back up. And let's just watch the stop, and we'll just show folks how you stop for that. So yeah, step back another step maybe, and then come forward, go into your float, do your pull, and then do that backwards. That's beautiful, nice float. Now she's gonna put her hands back. Wow, she stopped. She stopped, she completely stopped. That's because she's got power going here, power going back here. It was beautiful, thank you very much. So what we're gonna do is say, how do we keep that from happening? And so the goal is to stop, stop the drag. And the easiest way to do that, as, it, as your hands come down to the side, keep your hands, you can even keep touching your body, but right beside your body and nice and close. And just bring them up close to your hands. So you keep them close to your body the whole way up. And then you come up. When I was a kid, they taught prayer pose. They said you come up into a prayer and you push forward. But what they teach now usually is you come up and some people talk about giving. So as they come out, as they come out here, it's I'm sliding my hands here. And then I turn over and I do my pull. So uh, you get a pull. You come back up your hands back out, you get a pull again. Again, the whole goal for this is this is your power move, this becomes your no power move. For me, back to the original stuff, this is the power hand, this is the karate chop coming up through the water. It's just dropping the drag, that's the whole purpose of that, okay? So, um, I know that you have a very strong pull, so I'm gonna ask you to pull gently, and just so that we can see on the camera the two so that you can get your hand pulled back around and do that again. Do your arms all the way through the process, okay? First pull, oh, beautifully gentle, thank you very much. Now she slides her hands back up in, you can see that underwater as well, and she has another glide. That is just absolutely gorgeous. That is just as elegant as it can be. 